Nick, let's start with the move from China to Iceland. Again, we're talking about a matter of weeks. We're talking about months of uh, strategy and creative uh, uh, content that had to get thrown out the window. For the show open specifically, what did you guys do to be able to pull this off based on what you guys already had when it moved to Iceland? Yeah, so um, we were always going to shoot three music videos, uh, and those were going to be these pre-recorded performances from um, Paris, from Imagine Dragons, and JID, and, and B. Miller as well. And we'd, we'd selected um, the two uh, arcane tracks from sort of a pool of options. Uh, and, and the notion was, uh, last year we candidly struggled creatively with not having enough talent sort of tie into the show. And so this year, rather than try and sort of fight that fight, and uh, listen, I don't know how many of you have done a 14-day quarantine anywhere, but if you're uh, an artist, you don't have to do quarantine anywhere except for China. So it's tough to convince people to come out and join us for the show. So we were always going to do these music videos. When late August rolled around and we had to throw the plan out the window, we kept the music videos and those became the backbone, right? So instead of being the, the sort of... Uh, uh, I guess, sauce that we were going to put over the top of uh, what was going to be a, a pretty ambitious stadium show in China. It really just kind of became the entree. Um, and then we just sort of wrote to that. So we, we, we basically looked at where, do we, where don't we have a, a coherent show or coherent narrative that we can tell, um, and then spent two weeks basically in between takes shooting the music videos in L.A., um, figuring out what the, the rest of the stuff was going to be, and then um, hurriedly picking the United Kingdom because it was sort of this intersection of um, production infrastructure, permeable borders, decent COVID management, and with how busy the industry is globally, I needed a place where I could mine sort of three different entertainment markets worth of personnel, you know, and kit. Um, and, and so that was, that was the UK. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we designed uh, the Zon Marketplace on September 6th and shot it on October 13th. Uh, and then, like, a hundred people didn't sleep, and then it got delivered about two hours before air. Right. <laughs> On a very short timeline. I mean, mid-October, you're already in the event. So, yeah, 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 exactly. Just to give people a timeline, it's like, you know, doing your, your Super Bowl open when uh, the wild card round has already happened. So, <laughs> you know, uh, pretty crazy. Carrie, uh, same question on your side in terms of the move. Um, you guys, again, I'm sure had so much already laid out. You had, you know, everything, so much stuff built out. You knew that Arcane, which again is a, a new uh, a series that, that debuted uh, concurrently with Worlds, um, that's getting a lot of traction uh, among esports fans. Um, you know you had Arcane, but now you had a whole nother destination. So again, from a design standpoint, and a branding standpoint, how did you guys deal with that? Yeah, so the <laughs> good tradition we have is that we always like to pay homage to our host cities and our host regions in the brand kit itself. We like to have some DNA of the culture, the fans that they can feel proud of, um, which is a wonderful tradition we want to keep doing. Obviously, very difficult when you change your host region. Uh, and we now have a brand kit that we started a year in advance. Uh, we lock it months before the event starts so that all of our partners from our sponsors to our events team to our broadcast team can leverage that kit. Um, our preparedness kind of came back to bite us on that one because right. <laughs> <laughs> we were a month out and we had a brand kit that had elements of the Shenzhen Finals Stadium where we were going to hold finals. Uh, it had their architecture of their stadium as like a key design component in pretty much everything we had front to back. <laughs> That's what you get for doing your homework early. I, yeah, I know, right? right? <laughs> My perfectionism, geez. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we had to basically audit the design kit, top to bottom, see where that element of Shenzhen lived, because we just didn't want any distractions in the brand kit. We didn't want reminders constantly of people saying, oh yeah, it was supposed to be there, but now it's not. Um, so we had to redesign the core elements, redistribute the entire kit, all within the span of like two weeks, which was pretty Herculean, uh, but it did work out, so... And it ended up being, it had a, a unique look onto its own, which was, which was pretty fascinating, I, 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 the way that you guys were able to put that together. 